Hey guys, and welcome back to another Total War Warhammer 3 uh, Immortal Empires video. Now today we're looking at my recommended start guide for Carl Franz, uh, playing on Legendary Campaign Difficulty, Very Hard Battle Difficulty. Um, I haven't tested this out on um, lower difficulties, um, but I would assume that um, sort of the key steps that I take um, should be uh, sort of as applicable to lower difficulties as they are to Legendary and things. You know, sort of like the key people that you want to take out first and so on. Um, I am playing on uh, vanilla with no mods and I can't guarantee what's going to happen in your own campaigns but all I can say is that I've tested this about a dozen times and I'm really confident with uh, the, the possible things that are likely to happen early on um, and I'll talk about these things as we go through. Um, just before we begin if you could drop me a like, um, a subscribe and leave a comment on the video that would be very much appreciated. Okay then guys, right, so here we are turn one. So big changes for the Imperial campaign. The sheer pressures that the Elector Counts and yourself are going to be under now with the addition of the uh, Champions of Chaos, with Grom the Paunch being so close. There are some real threats to Elector Counts being taken out early. And um, in this strategy that I'm going to suggest, we're not going to try and save Hockland. They probably are going to fall any time between around, sort of, you know, depending on what they do with their army at first, any time between about turn four and turn eight. Um, so we are going to take a hit to our authority but after that we are going to try and limit those hits as best we can there is still a danger that Ostermark are going to fall to Norska a combination of sort of Norska, Dreyka and possibly sometimes Katarin as well um, but um, yeah we are going to try um, and uh, deal with the threats in order that they are going to appear in, in kind of Reichland itself and then get over and deal with Vlad before he becomes a big problem and starts taking out Electors left, right, and centre. Um, so with diplomacy, yeah, just take whatever you can get from the various elect accounts early on. So non-aggression trade. Um, so you see, we've got something there with Midland. Here's Talabekland, and I think something's available with Sterland as well. Um, I'm also going to suggest you pay Cater in a little bit of money just to get um, trade with her because I think we are very, very close usually. Um, so that does seem to be it's just just to just to, I mean like you know like we she's very important in terms of trying to keep threats from the Norfolk Bay so I figure anything that we can do early on to um, to get her friendly and what we're also going to do just to try and hold Vlad off uh, finishing ending the non-aggression pact that we've got with him uh, possibly by a turn or two the jury's out on this one but it did seem to have an effect a couple of times I tested um, so we are going to get him to pay us uh, to uh, join war against Templehof because they are no threat to us whatsoever. Um, but um, Vlad will like the fact that we have uh, that we have done that. Um, so yeah, just um, before we go on and do our first battle, um, we're going to also um, fire up the um, the growth. Um, so. It is really important that we do buff our missiles, um, but first of all, because we uh, don't have the quest for the wizard on turn two anymore, um, and we're not going to be able to get a wizard from Altdorf until uh, I think it's at tier four, um, it is really important we do anything we can to buff growth early on. Um, Right, so now we're going to go in and we're going to fight the first battle. Um, so pretty standard deployment here. With these battles, I'm just going to show you the uh, the replays. Um, they're going to be sped up, so if you want to slow them down, uh, feel free just to see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but here I've just got my guns behind Carl Franz, uh, the mortar behind them. Uh, mortar is prioritising the crossbows. I moved the right guard up, which got the attention of the crossbows because they figured that the right guard was probably the target that they most wanted to shoot at. Um, so, and then we take out the crossbows with the right guard. Um, always, um, yeah, don't forget um, about the uh, the Reichland Rune Fang ability that Carl Franz has. So he's going to be actually better fighting on top of some of the swords and things. But right just here, I just had him tanking initially. Um, but yeah, when he pops that buff down, um, it's going to give 24 melee attack and I think 8 leadership to everything in a 35 uh, meter radius around him. So that is really, really strong. Um, yeah, it's really strong. And I think uh, once that unit's dead, Carl Franz is simply going to go on to their general and we're just going to get the right guard to slam in and break, uh, break the infantry over on this side. Um, and I think that is pretty much going to be uh, GG. Yep, so there we go. Decisive victory on fight one. Uh, it's, it, that's not a difficult fight at all. I hope you won't have any difficulties there. Um, Okay, so we are going to work our way towards Pistol Core first of all. Um, we don't need Root Marcher yet, so um, particularly not to get to Grunberg, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, but certainly any buffs, um, yeah, like I say, any buffs that we can get for our missile is going to be super important for fighting Festus and fighting Vlad. Um, so again, here we go. Just got the first term settlement battle, just to give you the gist of what I was doing. Um, again, it's sped up. So we've got the right guard up in the trees um, over to the right there. 
Um, and yeah, I've chosen to attack from uh, from this angle just because there's sort of two entryways. It's quite flat. Um, the enemy doesn't get like a significant uphill advantage, you know, firing down on you as it does on the ramp um, over to the opposite side from where we are at the moment. Um, so I've simply got um, more to trying to get on the crossbows, which is also triggering their skirmish um, fairly um, fairly reliably. So they are sometimes running around. I've got my handguns taking down the tower on the on, on the left here. Um, once that tower goes down, uh, we'll move the handguns to uh, try and take the barricade out and then get some shots into those crossbows if the mortars haven't yet finished. And on the uh, on the right there, we've just got all of the uh, all of the foot troops um, with Carl France uh, fighting. He's buffed them up. I think I'm going to send the great sword just in to intercept the uh, the infantry coming for us here. Um, but overall, yeah, this is again not a difficult fight. And all the while I've been doing this, I've just had the uh, the right guard. Um, yeah, the right guard just uh, yeah. So well, I say that actually. I think I was just about to give them the order. Uh, but yeah, have the right guard just going for the point. If you do that a little bit sooner, then what it will do, they'll pull some troops away from the front line fight uh, because they'll be sort of you know they'll be triggered like oh no, we need to go and deal with that threat back there. So. Uh, so you, you might have slightly fewer uh, units involved in, in the fighting. Um, and um, yeah, you can see the crossbows are nearly going now. Um, barricades are nearly down. The guns will just uh, help finish them off. And then I'm going to get the guns firing into any of the melee where they can. And do just remember as well that you can alt and attack click uh, with the mortar to um, attack the ground. Uh, find a nice big blob of infantry. So we're going to loot and occupy here mainly for the uh, replenishment so we can get moving. And uh, we've got a decisive victory but we have still Bring taken some casualties. Man. Another point into pistol core. At Altdorf we are going to build Altdorf up towards tier 2. We're going to demolish the training field. We don't need that. Um, and um, we're going to recruit a Huntsman General Lord um, who's just going to come and join us and do some bits and bobs over the coming turns as well. Right, and for recruitment we're going to take one archer and one spear, one basic spear. And this is what we're going to be using to deal with Grom, uh, mainly the basic stuff. Right, so turn two. So um, Hockland lost their army to Festus, so they will give us non-aggression, they'll give us some cash for that as well. Um, we're just trying to take as much money as we can from elect accounts, from any any deals that we can get. And also interestingly, look at Marienburg. Um, minus 72 when we come onto Marienburg in just a second on the video. Um, yeah, so historical events involving Marienburg, they're just not happy about, and there's also like a, a trespass registered there. Um, now, usually Kazrak will declare on them, um, so they will have their hands full, but um, if they didn't, uh, we might be in trouble. Okay, so moving Carl France up here, we're going to recruit two more archers and we're going to move our secondary Huntsman General from Altdorf up as well. Um, this is going to trigger um, the uh, the secessionists to put their army into uh, into Ubersreich. So on to turn three now, and we can see they've put their small army there. Um, right now, we're actually going to make this attack with our secondary general and bring Karl Franz in to reinforce. This is so that Karl Franz can race off towards Alhar in a second. Um, so this battle again at speed. Now we are going to use the um, yeah we are going to use the huntsman back here just to just for some shenanigans basically he's going to get some value shooting at some of their missiles he's the he's the only one of our troops on the map and he's in stealth so they have deployed all of their stuff spread around um, I did notice that they sent the general back there quite a lot so we actually managed to kite the general with our huntsman which was really really nice so like really good value great way to get that guy taken out. Um, and uh, Carl Francis' main force, we're just going to push in by the uh, by the closest avenue, which which happened to be uh, through this uh, front entryway here. Not necessarily a difficult fight. You've just got to be careful um, that your guns are going to have line of sight. We do have some archers now. Um, just try and get your uh, yeah your mortar is probably the slowest thing moving up. So try and try and you know do try and get some value from it. Um, use your right guard to go for some points and just snatch those points so you can take out any towers they might be building. Here we are again. We're just we're just kiting this uh, this general to his doom, um, and then what we can do with the huntsman is to go and snatch the point back here after they've moved anything off once they can't see him anymore. So yeah, I did take some casualties in this battle, um, but we're not going to be getting much replenishment this turn. Um, we are going to be moving Carl Franz off to take Ut to take uh, Eilhart, and then he's going to sit inside there and uh, replenish. So yeah, not a particularly difficult fight. I think I got a close victory here this time. Yeah, it was a close victory. I did take some casualties. Frontline did get a bit beaten up. 
um, just because they had uh, they did have a number of crossbows. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's most of the secessionist force taken out. We're rushing down to our heart to get them before they manage to raise any troops there. And I think they have a single lord in the fort at the moment um, at Helmgart. Now, like I said before, just keep an eye on your control, um, because you might be able to get away with looting and occupying all three of the settlements here for replenishment, and you might still not trigger a rebellion. Um, but do just be careful. I think um, I uh, was aiming... So so essentially what's going to happen is after we've dealt with Alhart, we're going to go and take the fort, and then we're going to go and deal with Grom's armies. So um, it'd be great if Karl Franz gets to attack the rebellion and get the XP from that. Um, so we're, we're aiming to, um, yeah, to handle that. Um, on our way back down after dealing with Grom. Now here at uh, Altdorf, still on turn three, um, I you could put the trade goods in here, um, but we're stacking out growth. Remember, we do really need we need to get to tier four to get a, a wizard, um, and I do think CA will probably change this and make the landmark move the uh, the wizard landmark down to tier three, and maybe add like a third tier for that as well. So that would be a tier five, just so that it's a three tier landmark building, as it's such an iconic building. Um, putting another point into uh, pistol core there, and on to turn four now. So um, we're not going to do anything that benefits Hockland. Unfortunately, they're not long for this world. So we're going to do. Uh, we're, we're just going to increase the fealty of the Golden Order. That'll get. Um, yeah, that'll get Balfour get a bit closer towards a confederation. Um, we can see that. Um, yeah, Hergig is uh, is still there. So um, Festus is in uh, Crudenwald, which is the minor settlement in that province. Um, now, um, this isn't actually necessary. I wasn't sure with the changes to the game whether it was possible for them to uh, to recruit at the fort um, without, you know, obviously they don't have the capacity to put any buildings in there. I wasn't sure if they'd be able to recruit like troops at tier zero. Um, but certainly um, we've got our guy close there, our second general who is close, um, and we're going to send Carl Franz for Alhart. Now this is not a difficult fight, I'm not going to show you this one, um, it's the same strategy that we've used in a couple of the previous fights, so yeah, managed to get a, uh, a good victory here. And uh, do I loot on this particular playthrough? Um, no, I think I'm just going to occupy, and that's going to, I think, it, yeah, I think I was over, no I did loot and occupy. Um, but that still means that, yeah, we're still not not dangerously in um, rebellion territory. Remember that conquest penalty is going to wear off, but we are gonna we're not going to be in the settlement anymore. So I think I think the rebellion is going to come um, at some point. But certainly we're trying to get as healthy as we can before we go on and take the fort. So Aldorf is now up to tier two. Um, we are going to be, um, we're going to repair the buildings at our heart that were just looted. We're going to recruit another spear and another archer. Play it by ear what you take. Um, aim to have something like, I don't know, between four and six front line and then the remainder just take archers. And we are going to build a control building uh, into Altdorf. We're going to build the pottery now and we're going to build the growth building up as well because we are, we're sitting pretty on quite a lot of cash. So even though at some point down the line we will demolish that growth building when we're uh, well on the way towards tier four. And um, in terms of settlements to build up now, Isleheart might be most at risk because at some point Bellacor is going to come down for us. Remember, we've got um, Kazrak in the province north of us as well. Um, so Isleheart is quite often the weak link. It is also possible that because we're leaving Grom alive and we're not actually going to take Massive or Cal, and we'll come on to that, you'll see what I'm going to do exactly with Grom. Um, but sometimes he does sort of leap over and go in strange ways and he'll either go for Grumberg or Alhart. So um, we're going to prioritise building those up. Um, Uber's Reich's a bit closer to our fort. Um, and um, yeah, now on diplomacy, we're not actually... So we can see that um, Paravon are at war with Grom and they're at war with the Wood Elves. Um, so we don't want to get friendly with Paravon particularly because we don't want to do anything that is going to annoy Orion. Um, but it's um, it's good to know. So yeah, Paravon are down to a final settlement, the major settlement. And so what we are trying to do with Grom is uh, try and stop Grom rushing in, taking out Paravon, uh, replenishing, and then using that as a staging post to then come for you. So we want to deal with Grom's armies as quickly as we can. Um, and then we can go and take out Festus before he gets out of control. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. And there are a number of ways that we can do it. Um, but I'm going to talk you through some of the most likely, uh, most the most likely outcomes as we get there. So interestingly, we got Got Trek and Felix. Um, so yeah, so this is really helpful. So I think all I'm going to do at, at Altdorf, um, we do see that Festus is uh, besieging Hergig now. So their days are numbered. Um, but at Altdorf, um, I am going to grab a, a general just to um, just to activate, just to speak to Gotrek and Felix. 
So yeah, and then we can bring them up. We can put um, Felix into um, Carl Franz's army. Uh, he brings that um, healing. It's like he. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a healing hands type ability. Um, like where I think he gives uh, some. I think it's like ward save, and if you're near to him, he does a heal. Um, I, I forget. It's been a little while since I've kind of played with Got Trek and Felix in game two. Um, but yeah, we've got our guy here. So he's going to go back in. Um, they did sally out and he ran away uh, during the end turn. Um, but yeah, he's going to encircle here. However, they've changed these forts, so you can't just run through them now. Like They do actually trigger um, a settlement interception. Um, so like I say, just having this guy in the fight is is fantastic. Like The Huntsman will help a lot. Um, but yeah, Carl Franz, um, because he is going to intercept, the settlement is going to intercept him. Um, like He is going to be the primary force on first. So yeah, this is exactly what we want. Um, so we get to have all of his force deployed. Um, now, I don't think... I think we've got too many troops uh, for them to sally out if we wanted to just encircle here with France. Um, like, if we weren't... and If there wasn't such a pressing need for troops, like, we could have recruited slightly fewer troops and you could have tried to do this as a field battle. Um, but again, at speed, I'm just going to show you um, how I do this as a siege. Um, so I tend to, yeah, position over to, uh, to one side like this. I'm going to send Carl France and the Right Guard to go for the gate. Now, if we're lucky at the time, they'll all be milling about and there won't actually be anything on the other side of the gate and we can just charge straight up and that will get the attention of some of their units to chase us and we'll be able to go and grab the uh, the back capture point. Um, but um, otherwise, this is pretty pretty standard. Like I've got the mortar trying to do work on crossbows where I can. I've got my archers uh, firing as soon as they can. The handguns, to be effective, we're going to have to get them up on the walls. And um, we're going to send the um, yeah. We're, we're just going to send the chaff up first. I'm trying to preserve the um, the halberdiers and the great sword. So um, everything else is kind of going to go up and take the initial wave of damage. Uh, mortar's going to keep firing. Archers are just going to do their best to get into position to take out the crossbows. We do have inferior range to the crossbows, so you know it's a bit bit hair raising. Like there is some pain in this fight for sure. Um, and then when it's safe to do so, I'm going to get the guns up on the walls and they're going to get involved with shooting down onto whatever they can see. Um, so yeah, moving Carl France inside. So I was really lucky. Like you, you do have to be a bit cautious like when you move in. Just watch what the AI is doing because they will come and stand stuff in front of the gate. But like I just happened to find like a nice little... Uh, a nice little slot there where there wasn't anything there so I immediately just charged to the back cat point um, and we're going to try and take that out and uh, honestly like as long as we get the charge on them any Empire Knights that come for us like the right Guard will win that engagement especially if we're if they're uh, supported by Carl Franz so yeah th this is going okay I mean our front line will be beaten up um, our, our front line is going to be beaten up and there's not a lot I can do about that but these um yeah these maps are all fantastic like, I, I love defending them and they're still they're, they're still pretty fun to defend um, like having to hold a, uh, a second point like south of that back area um, is uh, yeah it's, it's a bit it's a bit tedious because I'd rather just stick everything up there but you know that would just make it a bit too a bit too safe wouldn't it I did plenty of that in Warhammer 2 um, so right we've got I think I'm just about to give the order to get my guns upon the walls um, yeah some of my spears are, are getting absolutely slapped it's a good job they're cheap and they can be re-recruited in a single turn um, but um, yeah like uh, I will be doing my very best, and I recommend you do the same, to try and try and um, keep the uh, the halberds and the greatswords as healthy as you can. You're going to be able to recruit a Caribou greatsword um, quite soon. Um, I think that unlocks around the turn 10 mark. Um, we're also going to have access to um, Sigmar's Sons and to a Regiment of Renowned Archers as well, the Death Jacks, um, so they're coming quite soon. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to occupy with Carl Franz so that he gets to sit inside and gets the uh, gets the replenishment. And then all I'm going to do is move the Huntsman General uh, just towards um, towards Bretonia. Um, as soon as Gottrek and Felix are there, um, then we're going to be bringing them up here as well. If you don't get Gottrek and Felix at this point, it's a good idea to just recruit a general, um, another Huntsman general, you can afford it, at Ubersreich and start recruiting. Now, the earliest I have seen Grom rush out of the uh, the, the fog and take uh, literally just take, go straight in and take Paravon uh, was turn six. Um, so we are trying to put ourselves in harm's way uh, to try and stop Paravon falling. Not because we like Paravon or anything like that, um, simply because there might be an option um, of pulling them into any fight that we have if we can successfully trigger an ambush. Now, um, what I'm about to show you here, this was not the most ideal uh, scenario for what happened. 
Um, so what we're trying to do is, is kill all of Grom's armies, and he's going to have an army and a half. He's going to have a stack and a half at uh, Massive Orcal. We want to get those, want to get all of that force out of there. And then what we're going to do, once Grom has zero force, we're going to be able to get two, three, four, five factions to join a war against him. Um, meaning that, um, yeah, the Fey Enchantress and the Wood Elves in particular are going to be uh, particularly putting pressure on, which is going to mean that we can just get away with having a very small force that can float, um, either stay at Helmgot until it's built up or go to one of the minor settlements while we're building those up. Um, so you'll see there, I just started putting points into Fervent. Um, anything that can reduce corruption is going to be really helpful uh, going forwards, considering we're contending with Nurgle, uh, Vampires and uh, yeah, other Chaos factions in time as well. Is it time? So we are not going to be allied with Paravon or anything like that. Um, so, um, but because we share a common foe and we're not at war with each other, um, there is a possibility that, yeah, we can get them to reinforce. However, um, there is also a real danger that they're going to detect any ambush and um, I'm very fearful um, across all of my testing. Yeah, Grom, Grom thinks he's pretty strong compared to your army. Um, but just in case you didn't take as many casualties as me and Grom seems to think you're a bit of a threat, um, he might play quite coy and hard to get and not come and actually try and make an attack. Um, depending on where you're standing and whether he can see you. Okay, so coming into turn six now. Um, now, one thing you should always be doing, I haven't mentioned yet, um, but you should always be trying to make sure that you've got a uh, 1,000 prestige uh, in the piggy bank so that if you uh, if you need it um, for something that is going to, for example, stop elect accounts going to war, um, then you have got that. Um, so we just took like 200 prestige, I think, then um, from, uh, from, that, um, from that dilemma. Now here we go, so we finished Hive Rebates, so that's boosting our growth. Um, you may want to play around and like, you know, there's probably arguments to be made for getting, um, yeah, the MS series to the Prince of Altdor for one of these other things, like, um, because you will see over the coming turns, um, Karaza Karak and uh, Lou and Leonka will end agreements with us, um, just because they don't like us enough. Um, but yeah, if we want to contend with, um, if we want to contend with uh, Festus and Vlad von Karstein, uh, we are going to need to put some points into our missiles. Um, and I'm going to focus on missiles as they are predominantly the uh, what we've got. We've only got one artillery piece. Um, it's nice. I do really like the improvements to uh, Karl Franz's army, uh, to most of the starting armies, actually. Uh, we're going to use this general to grab Gottrek and Felix, and then we're going to disband him. Uh, as Gottrek and Felix, we don't play to pay supply lines for, and I think we have them for 30 turns. So, yeah, fantastic. We're definitely going to use them. But like I say, don't panic if you don't get Gottrek and Felix at this point. You should have just uh, recruited a general um, at uh, Ubersreich. And just use him to get you a couple of fresh. Uh, see what you need after your last fight. Like if you need, if your spears are particularly damaged, like you might want to grab a couple of spears, or you might want to grab, um, yeah, you might want to just grab a couple more archers. Um, but I'll talk through how we're going to deal with Grom and the uh, deployment patterns. So as I said, so we're trying to take Grom out. The earliest I've seen Grom fall, I'm um, sorry, the earliest I've seen Paravon fall is uh, is the end of turn six, and Grom just like he, he just rushes in and takes it. Um, now you can check where his armies are by like looking at the control. We can actually just see on the map here. You can see he's got a full stack and a half um, at Massive Orcal. So he's a bit slow this time. Like various factors, you know, I mean, this is not, you know, there's so many moving parts in this type of campaign. So sometimes I've seen at, at this point in time, like Cassion had zero armies and uh, Grom was ready then to come and rush in. Um, but we're going to offer to join war against Grom the Pawn. We're going to get some money from this um, because we want Grom to be thinking about coming for us. We want him to come up here and we want him to see that we're damaged, for example. Um, we're going to try and use every trick in the book to see if we can get Grom to come and make the attack. And so you may have more or less success than, than I did in terms of how quickly you can get Grom to come and fight you. But we want to ideally do this as a field battle. Um, the perfect scenario is we catch Grom in an ambush. I don't successfully do that this time. Um, but what is good is that we manage to, uh, you'll see uh, when it does happen, we do manage to isolate Grom's army so we fight that by itself. Um, so yeah, here, here I just click on the uh, mass-produced small arm, small ammunition, I think, uh, whatever that said. And um, yeah, so I think I was just, I, I was I was thinking about like um, the other options available, but really I think, yeah, but boosting your missiles is exactly what you need to be doing. And just having a quick scan over control uh, in the province here. So you'll see we've got Gotrek recruiting um, uh, while we have our Huntsman General um, and Carl ready to go and get themselves into position. 
So um, now one thing I did notice, another, one of the tries that I did where I was off to one side with um, both of my armies in ambush, um, I then Grom will still go and attack Paravan, obviously he can't see you. If he can't see something of your forces then he's just going to go and attack Paravan and that's going to be that. And yeah, you might uh, you might say, oh well it would be easier to take Grom the paunch if, uh, if he had a settlement and do it as a settlement fight, but really like you only have a slow fast, a slow heavy, slow fast, a slow heavy moving cavalry that you can use to go and sneak in by a side door to go and get points. Grom's army is still, you know, particular. It's it's pretty tough for you to deal with when you're mainly only using Empire archers and you've got one mortar. He's got lots of orc boys. He's got trolls. He's got all kinds of stuff, and you don't have magic. So I I found it personally. I found it easier fighting him out in the field. Um, but here we go. As we move um, our huntsmen down, we can see that the half army is still at. Um, yeah, it's still at Massive or Cal. Now we can, we're, ju just from my other testing, I can tell you pretty much guaranteed um, that um, the full army is now at Canals, which he owns, which is a settlement that's, that's part of this same province with Paravon. So he is in position and ready. Um, and what we're going to see him do, what I'm going to try and do here is I am just going to try and see if uh, if we can pull him into an ambush. Now over the coming end turn, uh, Thorgrim, you know, it's a bit, bit rude, uh, does end his non-aggression uh, treaty, his pact with us. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, uh, but yeah, it's it's not a top priority for you to be trying to buddy buddy up with Thorgrim. You can do those um, those things that cost seven k at the top the, the bottom of your tech tree to get to get friendly with uh, with all of these non empire uh, and empire uh, people over time. So um, the ambush didn't trigger. Grom didn't go for it, but you'll see he's here now. He's got a single lord. He's got a half army and a full army. Uh, we want him at the very least to be able to see our huntsman. Now what I've done is I've put the huntsman into force march, um, just so that's a particularly um, yeah, that's a particularly enticing target. We're going to be able to move Gotrek over as well, and you'll see what I choose to do in the end was um, yeah, I took um, the huntsman out out of force march. I moved Gotrek up here in force march. I think after dropping some troops off. Um, or did I drop the troops off? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, but anyway, yeah, then we've got Carl France in ambush. Now, the thing here is that um, Paravon will take their go after Grom the Paunch. So um, Paravon won't inadvertently early uh, detect uh, your ambush. So it really is just whether or not it triggers if uh, Grom sees you when he approaches or not. And um, has it happened? What was I trying to show at this point? Um, yes, Hockland has. Yeah, so so her gig has been raised. You may have picked up on that. That might have happened a turn or so before. But this is a time frame we're working to. Um, so we're trying to get up there now before Festus uh, goes for Wolfenberg and starts uh, wailing on Ostland. Um, because we don't want any more. We're already in a negative in terms of our Imperial authority. We don't want that negative to get too too much worse. Um, I think you'll see here, I talked about it a little bit earlier on, but yeah, we're going to prioritise building up, I think, Isleheart first. Um, once we've got, um, you could you could just bank the growth and go for um, for tier 4 on Altdorf, but I think um, it's, it's worthwhile trying to get your minor settlements up to at least tier 2 and start walls being built on them. Um, because of the other threats that are going to be coming for your territory. Okay, so the ambush failed, but here we go. We caught him. We got him. This is what we wanted. So he opted to go, whether he was trying to go for Paravon or anything else, I literally body blocked him. Um, we had Carl in ambush. It would have been fantastic if that did trigger. Um, but basically Grom saw, um, yeah, detected Carl, well, saw Carl, and um, chose to make the attack. So before I speed this up, um, I just want to show you my deployment. Um, we are using a damaged army. I'm going to be hiding my cavalry over to one side. They're going to go and try and take Grom's artillery piece off. Um, yeah, so our troops are pretty damaged. You're going to need to be using. Um, you're going to need to be using sort of any tanks you've got available, like for example Felix here. Um, but we've also got the Huntsman General coming on, I believe. Um, our, our front line is not going to hold. Um, do your best to keep the great swords and the halberdiers alive. You'll see I was a little bit less than successful um, than uh, with uh, with this fight at doing that, but that's certainly what you should be trying to do. And I've just tried to guard my flanks. I mean, they've got pump wagons and all sorts, but the real priority is that your guns are going to be shooting. Um, they're going to be shooting uh, in terms of order of a priority, kind of like Grom the Paunch. Um, the river troll hag, uh, the pump wagons, and then trolls probably. Uh, if the pump wagons get into your lines and get into your archers, like they're going to do so much damage. Um, but yeah, Carl is also Carl's pretty good. I mean, he doesn't have Galmaraz yet or anything. We haven't done any of his quest battles, and we probably I probably wouldn't recommend doing them this early. 
the only quest battle I'd recommend doing is the one for the uh, the wizard on t- on uh, turn two, but alas, that's uh, gone. Whether whether or not that's just an oversight and that quest is supposed to still be in the game, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is a beta, remember, so you know things might change. And if anything does does change that you know like significantly impacts on what I'm saying in this guide, I might um, either just sort of do a. A quick comment video just saying what changes or you know you know if i if i need to i will i will redo the guide i mean this is you know carl francis is a very very popular legendary lord uh hence the uh yeah the demand there's been for for me from my community to uh to put this guide out in the first place okay so managed to trigger them anyway we moved forward just to get our mortar in position shooting at some of their stuff um so they have done, I think their artillery has done, I think it's been shooting at some archers. Yeah, you can see. In fact, it's shooting at the handguns at the moment. So I think I might choose to reposition those. Um, but as soon as there's enough separation between their army and their uh, their grudge thrower, I am going to, sorry, is it, is it God block? What are they called when it's green skin? Anyway, between between the catapult and their army, we're going to move our right squad in. Um, they might be, yeah, they are thinking. They're chasing me and it's a bit futile, isn't it? They're just sending like some infantry to go and chase my right guard but um but yeah this is sped up but you can you might be able to see from the frantic clicking and things that yeah so i'm, I'm trying to we're going to get the artillery off uh grom's coming in so we're going to switch the guns onto him in just a moment carl france is going to go in and duel him as well uh so we're trying to get rid of grom um then we're trying to um yeah we're trying to get rid of that river troll hag at the back there if we can take her out then that is going to take away grom's magic um, and then, yeah, we've got the, uh, yeah, so the trolls, you'll see, they've taken a heck of a lot of damage. Um, I mean, stone trolls are no joke, and we've got the pump wagons over on this right-hand side as well. Um, but yeah, um, our huntsman, I believe you did see him come on, and he's probably waddling over here. And um, we, we can use him in a pinch. We can use the huntsman's tank. Uh, we're using Felix to tank. So Carl Franz, I think I was chasing Grom, and then I gave up the chase because I just realized that these missiles were... Um, doing so much work and I don't think I've managed to I think um, I, I yeah I don't think I've turned my guns fully onto the um, yeah onto the river troll hag yet she does need to die but I think I decide at this point that yeah we'll get um, we'll, we'll get um, Carl France to go and focus on her now Grom is going to come back remember he does have regen so that's why it's uh, it's very good to kill him um, it's very good to actually finish the job um, I didn't quite manage to do it there uh, you'll see our lines are in tatters. This is definitely going to be the most difficult uh, fight that you're going to do. But if you follow the type of deployment that I've used for, you don't want to bunch everything up. Um, you don't want to give them opportunities to um, yeah to flank you. So make sure you do have some infantry, like some sp- some spears and things, you know, blocking your flanks as best you can. Um, fortunately, they don't have cavalry, so we are just mainly the fast thing that, that, that they've got that are the trolls. But they will still go and try and go and lap around you with um, with all of their orc boys and things. But yeah, despite the fact that the infantry is getting uh, pretty pretty badly slapped up, um, you'll see that we're actually doing pretty well here. Um, some of our missiles are taking you know a decent ma- amount of return fire from uh, their missiles as well. I think I'm getting my right squad here to go and uh, try and put the uh, try and finish try and just get the win here. I think I realise that there's a, we don't need to do too much more uh, to get uh, to get them to to rout and take army losses. Yeah, and there we go, and we've got the win. So fantastic. I think that probably was a Pyrrhic victory, but it is a victory and that is Grom's main army. So however you manage to do it, um, we are trying to just get rid of Grom's forces. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about why we're not taking Massive Orcal in a second. I did mention that earlier in the video. Um, but um, yeah, so now Grom is going to retreat. He's going to have the other, I believe, the other half army and then there's a single Lord. They should be nearby as well. Um and um, yeah, worst case scenario, like the worst scenario you could have is not only Grom taking ages to actually come up towards Paravon, but having to fight the army and a half at the same time. And it is doable. I mean, we'll see there's actually quite a lot of my army is still intact here and my characters are in pretty good health. Um, it is doable, but like I would say that, yeah, if you're, if you're less confident with the game um, and that does happen, then, you know, you might want to just uh, hop back a turn uh, in Legendary. Like if you've got, you know, if you're if you're serious about this and serious about getting a good start, you might have um, like the save file like on your desktop or something that you can just uh, revert back to. Um, right, so here we go. So we actually got a close victory. That surprised me. I thought that was Pyrrhic. Um, but yeah, as you can see, so Grom is here. So we've got the remainder of his force and Orion has just leapt out. And we've got um, we got Lewin ending his uh, non-aggression pact with us as well. So like I say, don't worry about this at the moment. They're going to like the fact that you're beating on Grom. Um, they're going to like the fact that you're fighting Kazrak, which we'll be doing soon, um, and all of that stuff. So don't worry too much about it. You know, it's it's, it's a shame. Like, cause I thought we were best bros, Lewin. I thought I thought you liked me, but um, 
Yeah, and I think Todd Bringer ends uh, non-aggression as well. And boy, is he going to dislike you because we're going to go and trespass all over him. Um, ideally, just a, just a side note, like where you where you are passing through elect count territory, it's 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 ideal for you to try and get um, yeah military access pacts. Um, but if you can't, then it's hard cheese, isn't it? You know. Um, okay, so here we go. Did they? Um, yeah, did they? Uh, yeah, we're attacking Broken Axe, so here we go. Oh no, this was Cassion, wasn't it? I was so confused then. Yeah, Cassion sallied out, um, thinking that my uh, my Huntsman would come in and support him, and obviously I just declined the attack, and Cassion got wiped out, so uh, never mind. But yeah, you'll see we've got the Regiments of Renown available. We will be using those just for speed. We don't want to sit around and replenish for absolutely hours in Reichland on our way to go and deal with Festus. Um, so yeah, we will be throwing in some Regiments of Renown and things. Um, so we're getting no replenishment here. Now that's part of the reason why we don't push on to go for Massive Orcal afterwards. Because although we could take Canel on the way and actually maybe sit there for a turn or two, the longer you take down here, um, then the longer it is going to take you to go and take Festus out. And the more risk of uh, sort of multiple elect counts falling, uh, which is definitely not what we want. Um, so what we're going to do um, is, rather than us have to go around there and use a very basic army, and by the time we get to Mass Falkal, there's nothing saying that they won't have recruited, you know, like 4, 8, 12 units in there by the time we actually do get around this corner and get there. Um, so um, it's uh, w w it might be possible, I haven't tried it, but I would not recommend it uh, with the army that we're starting with here, without magic as well. I was a little bit concerned that Orion was going to try and uh, take Paravorn, which would have made me trespass him. I haven't seen him do that, though, during any of the testing I did. Um, but yeah, so remember, so we are going in fairly damaged now. Um, and we are going to be, once we've finished all of this off, we're just going to be limping our way back to Reichland. Um, but what we're going to do to deal with Massive Orcal is uh, we, uh, when Grom has no strength, and uh, hopefully you will be able to take out most of his armies. But the, the people that we're going to be getting to join a war with Grom, uh, they will still do it. You might have to. I mean, I've been banking the money. Um, you might have to pay them a little bit, uh, depending on how many foes they've got and what they think and everything else. But the fact when Grom has no strength, uh, you should find it very easy to pull uh, multiple people in this area into wars with Grom the Paunch, um, which at best is just going to mean that you don't actually have to ever come and fight him again. And uh, even at worst, is going to mean that, you know, his, his attacks on Helmgar are going to be quite infrequent. Um, so you should be able to deal with them mainly with uh, with just the garrison. But we're going to just leave a small force there until uh, Helmgar is going to be built up to, pro probably, in probably until it's built up to tier three. And then it's at your discretion whether you want to drop the Huntsman or send him elsewhere. Um, right, so similar deployment to last time, just whizzing through this fight. There's not much to it. I mean, we are going to take damage. We, Like I say, we are going to limp out. And um, unfortunately, it was here, in fact, where I think I lose my halberdiers. Because um, I kind of wanted them to only back up anyway. But um, but yeah, coming into that fight, they did uh, find themselves getting getting fairly beat up. But otherwise, that wasn't uh, too difficult a fight. It's just, it's just the same old, like, um, yeah, prioritise your guns on any threats remaining from fight one. Um... And um, and yeah, and then you know your bow fire should yeah just 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 weigh down on um, on uh, on all of those orc boys and things. To war. What? All right, so just having a look. What was I having a look at here? Yeah, so this is it. This is it, guys. So we've taken away all of Grom's strength. He has zero armies right now. And even though Lewin has just ended non-aggression with us, look at this. He will just go to war with Grom the Paunch. Um, and. He's not the only one. Let them speak. So, Carcassonne, here we go. Right, she wanted a tiny bit of money and we were willing to pay it. So, yeah, we're going to get the Fae Entrancers into that fight as well. So, this is great because it is making, uh, you know, they're liking you more. It's improving your relations. Uh, now, Durfu uh, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't miles off, but he wasn't willing to do it. So, we left Durfu alone. That's a shame because, I mean, obviously, Durfu is fairly close. He's the closest out of the Wood Elves. Um, well, he's as close as, uh, I think it's Torgavan, isn't it? Um, but yeah, but Orion was keen to go into it. So whether this is just a quirk of the diplomacy system now, I hope it's not a bug. I mean, if this isn't possible. Um, but my whole, after doing a lot of testing, my whole, um, yeah, see, we get, um, yeah, Torgavan to do it as well. So um, after doing, you know, after, after testing, uh, like, multiple ways to start this, uh, I mean, I even tested running off and taking out Festus and letting the uh, secessionists just uh, just go wild around Reichland uh, at the start. Um, it was always Grom who was the biggest problem. Like, Grom is going to be your problem the quickest. 
Um, and uh, yeah, he's going to come at you with a full stack and a half, and it's just going to get very messy. And there's real potential for you to end up in a in a very sad situation, like stuck, besieged inside Altdorf. Uh, y you know, like uh, it's it's just uh, it's it's n I I genuinely think like uh, taking out taking out Grom's forces and then pulling all of his neighbours into wars with him is is the uh, is the way to go here. So um, coming on to turn ten now. And I think we're just doing the, um, yeah, we're just going to be limping back from uh, from where we were. I think I was just doing a general scan around, just trying to see what I could see in the world. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be limping back from the fight with Grom. Paravon are going to hate us, but they're not very strong. Um, we've been trespassing on their land for like several turns now. So Paravon are not going to be your biggest fans. Um, but um, you see already that the Fane Chantress has taken Canal straight away, straight away. Um, so, like I say, like just uh, pulling pulling them into wars with Grom. Hopefully, they're just going to keep him in check, and he won't be as much of a problem for you now. Um, and particularly the Fane Chantress. I mean, Lewin might come down every now and then, but like particularly the Fane Chantress and the Wood Elves um, are going to be very very helpful for you. Um, which is what makes this strategy my recommendation. Which is what makes it viable because you know we couldn't uh, we're not going to buy ourselves much respite if. Uh, if uh, we didn't have uh, Grom in any more wars, even though some of them may have declared on him over that end turn anyway. Um, but just not leaving it to chance is, uh, is uh, yeah, I, I definitely found this. So I went on to play, um, I went on to play, I think it was off this one, like I think I played about 30 or 40 turns. And I certainly found that this strategy, um, after testing a few different things and seeing what developed and what transpired over the coming uh, 10, 20 turns, um, this strategy was the most sustainable. Um, it gave us our starting province quickly. Um, it meant we dealt with one threat on our doorstep very quickly. Now, the garrison at home got... This is what I was talking about. The garrison there can, in theory, deal with the... Because Grom is just going to be able to recruit, like, Orc boys and stuff now. Um, he's not going to have any of his special starting units. He's not going to have his River Troll Hag. At least not for a little while. You know, you're talking, like, 15, 20 turns for him to, to sort of start getting those units back again. Um, so he's just going to throw stacks of Orc Boys at you. So that is, um, you, your garrison could probably deal with that at Helmgard by itself. But like I say, there's no harm uh, in, uh, in yeah, just keeping a, a small force um, at Helmgard. You don't want to put too much force in there. You don't want to just make this into a full-size second army because what you're, what, what Grom will do then is if he does manage to elude um, yeah, the, the other people he's at war with, then he will just bypass the fort and he will go round and he'll either pop up somewhere near our heart. He'll either run the way over, um, but he'll pop up either somewhere near our heart or somewhere near where uh, Scarslink used to start. Um, and yeah, he'll either go for Grumberg or our heart and then that will be a pain. Um, you might just need to be, you know, a bit fluid with that second force, with that Huntsman General. You know, if you do see any signs, you know, th then you might have to move him to one of your minor settlements. But that's why I say I think it's uh, it's worthwhile building your um, your smaller settlements up to uh, tier two, uh, so that you can get, um, yeah, so that you can build the first stage of walls on them, and then you've got a bit more peace of mind. Um, but yeah, okay. So coming on to turn eleven, then. So um, so we can get two hundred prestige here as well. Um, remember, you're always trying to keep at least a thousand um, prestige in the bank for emergencies. Um, but do feel free to use a bit of if you if you're well over that, you can use a bit of prestige to uh, what is it? Just uh, yeah, make different elect accounts like each other or make them like you. It's probably going to be your best bet. Um, now, an opportunity presented itself here that didn't happen in some of the other testing I did. Um, but Kazrak actually, uh, yeah, Kazrak um, uh, took Karaburg. So uh, we, I mean, this is a prime opportunity to take Kazrak out. So I was just going to go and race up straight towards um, straight towards Festus. Um, but as the opportunity is here, you are you are you'd be unwise to uh, yeah to, to not take it. So I definitely recommend if this does happen in your playthrough, then you know bargain. You're going to get to wipe um, Kazrak out as well. Hopefully wipe him out. I mean, there's nothing to say that he hasn't like spawned a little baby army somewhere. But um, at this point in the campaign, yeah, hopefully you know there's a decent chance that you know just taking Karaburg. Um, giving it back to um, Toddbringer, that's going to raise, I think it still raises your fealty with them if it's a minor settlement. Um, so I think it raises Imperial Authority if you give back a major settlement, and I think it raises fealty alone if you um, give back a minor settlement. But anyway, yes, yeah, so um, so we do this fight manually, I would do this fight manually, and then after that you're going to go for um, Festus. Now I recommend that you approach Hockland in ambush stance when you get closer so that his armies are likely to be away and then you're quickly just going to sneak in you're going to take Crudenwald um, as a staging ground and you're quickly just going to go and take Brass Keep out and then just go for whatever's left.
you might even catch him in force march passing through midland or something like that so um so yeah you know that'd be fantastic if he's uh, right next to you um but yeah guys i hope you found this first um so it's turned out to be like a first 11 turns guide um i hope you found this um yeah i hope you found this useful um do let me know in the comments please drop me a like on the video and drop me a sub if you'd like to see more content like this and um all in all yeah good luck playing immortal empires with carl france take care and i'll see you next time